Well, it's a long story, but here it goes. started this project it was yeah it was uh beginning the fall time and it was kind of cool out here and it was pleasant to work out in the garage and you know and worked on it till i got too cold then it got to 15 degrees out here and then the christmas debacle and to be quite honest with you just a little frustrated with the whole thing Put those over here. We got to put them on the train set. Put, put, stay, make a stack right there. <laughs> I don't see no train cars. They're train cars. What in the world? <gasps> what in the world? I know what that is. Let's go look. That says a steam train. What's over the sea? <laughs> you open it up and look. Pull the top off. I can hold it. Open them up. Let's look. Where'd it go? You know what? He may already put it on your train set. You want to grab that? Let's go see. Did you see that? You can't grab it. Oh Here he comes. See the, you see the button right there? There's two buttons, pink buttons. Hit. Stop, when he gets around here, we'll stop. He puts some cars on it. Here he comes. That's a real steamer. Look at the steamer on that thing. Well, I already looked at it. It's this piece of track right here, that cart, that tender is the one that picks the power up. The sheet that gets in right in this area, it does it, but I put another, I even put another electrical thing in there. Well, let's talk about the last problem first. This ESU cab control, the failure. I haven't given up on this system. I really like it, and I think it's the new new wave, new technology stuff that would go with my grandson in the future, and and he's he's already kind of a step ahead. But what ended up happening is this the controller, the controller itself. This is a brand new one, by the way. The controller, this little wheel on the controller failed. And what it, it 
what it would do is as soon as you would try to move the train a little bit, the speed control never would go from one to six or eight. It would only go zero, eight, zero, six, zero, eight. It would bounce back and forth. It never would gradually go down and it ended up, you know, the train was either running full blast or it wasn't. So this failed. So long story short on that, I called these ESU people after Christmas and, uh, you know, they stood by their product. Come to find out is, you know, they don't build these things all year long. They build a certain amount of them and then they shut down production on them. They just guess at how many they're going to need apparently. And then uh, that's what I was told. Uh, don't know if that's true. That's kind of what makes sense to me in it anyway, because you know, how many of these can, can they sell in a year? Uh, so anyway, I, they, I sent the old one back into the fella and he, uh, sent me a whole brand new one. Now the other issue, the bigger elephant in the room, the track. I didn't realize these things was that cantankerous. I mean this this thing when when it went from when it got down that cold this track would not work and the trains kept getting stuck in the tunnels which was frustrating because I you can't go up in the tunnels and fix anything and then uh, this piece of track right here it somehow when that tender crossed it wouldn't go across it's the power would stop I there's even a drop for just that piece and, and I don't know. There's something going on in here. So what it ends up being is these things right here are a pain in the butt. Because after a couple hours of playing with it, this little uh, standby. Nope, oh, there it is. This little thing runs like a champ on this track. Doesn't miss a beat. Doesn't do anything. So basically being a novice at all this train thing they just don't work or not work some of them work sometime some of them don't work sometime some of them never work some of them always work i don't i i didn't get that again it added to the frustration level and basically with the temperature and not having the ability to control anything out here in this garage i covered it up I just covered it up. I needed a break. Did a couple of trips. Did one out in January. Did another one out uh, in March. Did another trip. Now I'm back. And this is what I've got going now. And it goes to the front of the coach there. You see the flags. The pole. And... See, I'm gonna go down. Let's see if I can show you the cliffs. Here's a cliff. He's got a pond on the other side, and that's a waterfall right there. It comes off of his pond. Running 
Andrew. Four trees taken out over here. So the animal's trimmed up. And there she is squared in. And about uh, eight inches under that ground, it's solid, solid, solid rock. It ain't going nowhere. Yeah, getting closer. I think she had to drive rebar in, drill it in. Get these forms down. Okay, plumbing's in, an RV spot midway down on the wall. Go over yonder. There's the washer, the lavatory, the shower, the toilet, and a sink with the water coming in. We 
waiting for the spray guy. Shoot some bug juice on it. Well, we got a glitch. The uh, sand's gonna have to be screeded down about two inches so we can get the five inches of concrete and the two inches of insulation into there. Because as of right now, It ain't gonna be enough. It'll be a three inches of concrete. That's got to go down another. That's got to go down the thickness of the uh, of the insulation. on some of it but overall we're good manifold thing didn't put in but I think that's gonna work 